Hi everybody, um, I'm making a Durban lamb curry today. Um, I need to show you what is in my dry pot. The dry pot, which is now on a medium heat on the stove, contains a heaped teaspoon of mustard seeds, um, a teaspoon of fenugreek seeds, and a teaspoon of cumin seeds. Now, what I'm going to do is to wait until the seeds start to pop. And when they do, that is my signal for adding some oil. Um, I'm using coconut oil. Probably should be using ghee, but I haven't got any today, so I'm using coconut oil. And that is going to come along with the onions and the garlic. And when I add the onions and garlic, I'm going to add a small handful of curry leaves. My seeds have now started to pop in the, in, the, in the dry pot. So that is my cue for adding some oil and some onions and garlic. I've now added the onions and garlic. I'm about to add the curry leaves. And now we wait for a short while for the onions to soften. This is the, what the pan looks like. Onions, garlic, curry leaves, and the dry spices that were popping in the pan. At this point now, I'm about to add my mixture of curry blend and some turmeric. This is what the, the pot looks like. I've just taken it off the stove so that I can show you. It's got a lovely yellow color thanks to the turmeric. There's no point in rushing this part. Um, it takes quite a few minutes for the onions to soften and collect all those lovely aromatic flavors from the spices. Um, when the onions are softened a little bit, I will then add um, a mixture that I have made and previously frozen so that it's convenient to use. And that is some fresh ginger grated and a little bit more grated turmeric, plus a bit of grated chili. Chili is totally optional. You can add a lot of chili if you like it spicy and not so much if you don't. Um, so, tomatoes are still to come and we've got the vegetables that will come in after the meat has gone in. Yeah, the onions are suffering nicely. I'll now add my uh, chili and ginger. At this point, there are also another lot of spices that are really nice to add. Optional, but they, you know, just make for more flavor. And that is a couple of cinnamon sticks, a few little pieces of cardamom, the whole pieces of cardamom, and just a few little pieces of clove. So I'm going to pop those in now. I'm now going to add my meat because it seems to be sufficiently softened. I'm going to add my meat. Now I'm going to put it on a higher heat on the stove so that the meat will brown. Now, just waiting for the meat to start to brown. When the meat is brown, I will then, that will be my cue to add the tomatoes. And then the tomatoes give the, uh, the, the whole curry um, a degree of liquid. Rather than adding water, I really don't like adding very much water. Sometimes I need to add a little, mainly because it detracts from the intensity of the spices. My intention always with a good curry is that you should taste the spices rather than the heat of the curry. So it's rather for it to be flavoursome 
rather than bitingly hot and spicy. The seasoning that I've got here is actually called Indian seasoning. It's got a lot of the lovely spices that I've put in already, but it's just a little bit more and it's got a little bit of salt with it, but a curry like this is actually going to need about two teaspoons. I use a pink Himalayan salt. That should, should do it. But the important thing to do with curry, later on down the track when the vegetables are added and everything is inside, you of course need to adjust the seasoning. Right, now... The meat is sticking a little bit on the bottom of the pan, which is lovely because then it's going to give a little bit of extra flavor to the dish. And we are now going to add the tomatoes. Fresh tomatoes are far better than tinned, but really if you don't have the time or you haven't got the tomatoes, tinned will be fine as well. Now we let that cook for a little while and then finally I'm going to add my vegetables. Yeah. Right, I'm now at the point where um, my potatoes are all chopped up um, in water so they don't go brown. But I'm now going to strain the potatoes and the potatoes will go in the pot along with chopped up butternut. Butternut gives the curry a bit of a sweet flavour without ever needing to add any sugar. This is now what the curry is looking like. So it's now going to go on the stove and it will now, I'll turn the heat down once it's come to the boil and boiling well. I'll check if I need any water. I might need a little bit more of the turmeric colouring. Right, at this point now, we're going to let the curry cook happily on its own without any interference. Right, um, the curry now is looking pretty good. Um, I'll try and show you what it looks like. It's a good colour, good consistency, good taste. I did do a taste test. Now, this is what I do. It's not always conventionally done, but I um, grate a little bit of fresh ginger at the end of the curry. Just a very, very small bit. It's a hint of flavour rather than flavour. Another ingredient that I put in at this point is some garam masala and I put that in right at the end. And the last ingredient that I'm going to put in right at the end is coriander leaves. In they go. Now I'm just going to put it on the stove for another couple of minutes and then it will be ready to serve. And there's our curry, happily boiling away for its last few minutes before it will be ready to serve.